Alrighty guys, so we are on to lab number four, which is sharing a river, the Colorado River story. And this is going to be part one, straws in the Colorado. So you'll go through, you'll read this introduction here, and it's talking about what you are going to learn. Um, these are just the objectives. So I'm going to skip on down here to, keep on going back to the, the wrong labs here, sharing the Colorado River. Part one, straws on the river. Um, so it talks about what the Colorado River is used for. And here you can see a picture from 2002 versus 2003. This is June to December, so a year and a few months. And you can see the river is very much dried up. Moving on down here, it shows you that they did an apportionment. So this is the states and countries that are using the Colorado River. California and Colorado take up almost 50% of it, leaving all of these other areas to kind of split up the rest. You need to first watch this video called The Colorado River um, Running Nearly Empty. It's about 12 minutes long. I can't show it in my video due to copyright restrictions, so you'll need to watch that on your own, and you'll answer the first four questions along with that. I am going to be skipping on down to question number five here, and we're going to be analyzing these two graphs. So you can, this is a scatter plot, and you, when you draw a line on a scatter plot, you're going from where the majority starts to where it ends. So you're just kind of following the trend. You're looking for trends here. You don't play connect the dots. So you can see it's decreasing on this graph, and on this one, the flow volume, you can see where they started versus where it ends is also decreasing. So for question number five, this is how do the long-term trends of the two graphs compare? You can see that the general trend is that they are decreasing over time. Now what, number six, what three years had the least snowpack in the Rockies between 65 and 2010? So this is the snow graph. You can see it says snow here. You're going to look for the three lowest points. So right down here at 19, roughly 77 is one. 1981 and probably right here about 2002, those are our lowest snowpacks. And question number seven, we're going to be looking at this graph here. What three years have the lowest flow volume in the Colorado River? You're looking for the lowest peaks. So this is going to be right here, probably around 1933, here around 1977, and again up at 2002. And whenever you watch that 12-minute video at the beginning, it's going to go through and talk about a lot of this type of stuff. And it's actually really interesting to see how, you know, the water source is getting depleted. For the next two questions, questions eight and nine, you'll be using this chart here. So for question eight, it says list the top five holders and their percent of water used. So you can see down here, it tells you acre feet. It's just, the darker it is, the more they use. So we're looking for the darkest ones, the five darkest. So I'm going to go here because this one's obviously really dark. It's 1,637,163 feet. So that's how much is used. So you would write that down for Central Arizona Water Conservation District. And then to find the percentage, there's 7.05 million available. So you are going to take the number from the Central Arizona Water Conservation District, the 1,637,000 number, divide that by 7.05 million, and that is going to multiply times 100. It will give you a percentage. So for this one, you're going to get 23%. Moving on over, this one is also really dark, the Imperial Irrigation District. And it actually uses more water than the one over in Arizona here. So we're going to do our math again. You'll take the 2,690,000 divided by the 7.05 million, and you're going to get about 38% for that one. This one also looks really dark, the Metropolitan District of Southern California. That one, when we do our math, is going to give us 13%. Okay, so let's see, we got 300. All right, so this one is next then, the Colorado River Indian Tribes. They use 342,000. Do your math, you get 4.8%, and we need one. The Paleo Verde Irrigation District, that one's actually higher than the Colorado River Indian tribes. Not by much, but a little bit. 600, 
or 362,000. Do your math to divide that out and you get 5.1%. So all the rest are gonna use about 16% of the Colorado River water. So how much of the total water available from the Colorado do the top five holders use? So you'll add up all those numbers that you wrote down, not the percentages, the actual numbers, and you will get 5.975 million acre feet total now remember there's only 7.05 million acre feet available, which is what it tells us right here. So that leaves about 1 million acre feet, which is roughly about 16% for all the other stakeholders to use. Okay, and then we're gonna be using this chart here for the next couple of questions. So how much total water available? Oh, we already did number nine. Number 10, what was the difference between water used and supply, water supply in 1922 when the Colorado River Pact was signed? 1922, so come right around here. It looks like there is roughly about 20 million acre feet of water available in 1922. And in the last decade, that supply has dwindled to about 15 million acre feet. Number 11, what is the difference between water used and total water available in 2002? Well, in 2002, we're right up here, we used, usage is the red line, we used about 15 million acre feet, but available water was only 6 million acre feet. And give two reasons why you think that this would account for a rising demand for water in the Colorado River Basin. Think about what uses water. What do people do that use water? Maybe more people moved to the area, so the population increased. Or maybe they were farming, so they needed to do irrigation to water their crops or to feed their livestock. So that is it for this particular section. I know this video seemed kind of short, but that is because you're going to be watching a 12-minute video at the beginning to answer those first four questions. And then there is a part three to this lab, which I will explain later on. You'll be making a short PowerPoint though, and you'll be using some of the information that you would learn about here through the reading with Lee's flow. I will talk to you guys later. Have a good day.